Hey everybody, it's Linnea. Today I am using the August 2020 card kit from Pink and Main, and this one is called Best Friends. This kit really truly is packed full of things. Let's take a look at what's inside. So first you're gonna get this postcard that tells you all about the kit. It has the color palette as well as all of the ingredients of the kit. This is the six by six Best Friends stamp set. It has this layering floral heart and a whole bunch of sentiments and other tiny little coordinating images. It's just beautiful. Here's the coordinating best friends die set. You can see that it has those scripty words, the best friends, and then it has that heart die that will cut out the stamped floral heart. Next up, this is the stencil. And although it's not named, I usually just label my stencils after the kit name. So I will be referring to this as the best friend stencil throughout the video. It's this fun kind of like leafy geometric pattern it goes so well with the kit. Here's the best friends paper pack. I'm gonna take these out so that you can have a look at all of the patterns. There are 24 sheets in here and you're gonna get two of each pattern and they are double sided. These colors are amazing and I love how each of the papers coordinates perfectly with other elements in the kit. You're gonna see that these colors are throughout the kit in the papers and in the embellishments and as are the patterns. So like this pattern here is the same pattern as what is on that heart in the stamp set. So it's super awesome. Here's one where it has that pattern and also all of the colors of the kit. I just love this paper pack. It's one of my favorites that Pink and Main has ever come out with. And I love pattern paper and I usually tend to hoard it, but I think I used a fair amount in these five cards. And by that, I mean, I actually cut it up. For me, that's a big deal. I didn't have this mesh bag laying out before, but I do want to mention that all of the Pink and Main kits come in this awesome eight and a half by 11 mesh bag. Here are the sequins, and like I said, these are going to coordinate perfectly with the rest of the kit, so those colors are awesome. They're nice and shiny. You're going to get a little button flare piece, and now let's keep going with the rest of the embellishments. Here are the enamel shapes in this kit. I love the pink and main enamel shapes, but these ones have an extra added bonus. There is glitter in these enamel dots. They're so fun. Here's some chipboard stickers, and like I said, you can kind of see how those polka dot patterns, those are carried through through the pattern paper, the colors are in the pattern paper, so everything is fit to match perfectly. There's five different styles of ribbon. You're gonna get four ice rink white envelopes, a half sheet of black glitter cardstock, which I'm so angry at myself I didn't use in this video, and I just love this black glitter cardstock. The glitter doesn't shed, which is awesome. You're gonna get a bunch of cardstock and you're gonna have pink, a coral, green, and blue. And those are textured, like a woven texture. You're gonna get a black that's embossed with dots and then two sheets of white ice rink cardstock. And that's everything in the kit. I'm gonna lay it all back out here and truly this is such an amazing value and I love that everything is perfectly coordinated between the colors and the patterns so that you know all of the products in the kit are going to work together to make beautiful uh, designs. Okay, so I'm gonna make five cards in this video. Let's get started with the first one. All of my cards are pretty simple. I'm a clean and simple designer, so I like to make cards that are easily reproducible or even mass producible sometimes. So you're gonna be able to take these designs and you're gonna be able to make them yourselves because I didn't really pull in anything other than some inks, other than what's in the card kit. So for this first card, I have that solid heart stamp, and actually I am stamping on the back side of it. So I have that pretty floral design up against the lid of my Misty, and I'm inking up the smooth back side with some dye ink. I'm gonna spritz that with water and then give that a stamp. And I'm stamping on watercolor cardstock. I'm gonna give this probably about two minutes to transfer and check this out, when I'm done stamping, look at that, it's like a fun, easy watercolored heart, but it took no effort at all. I was trying to decide if I wanna add that layering piece over the top, and I decided that I wanted it. So I went ahead and I placed that over the top, 
and I inked it up with Versamark ink and I white heat embossed it. And now it looks like I have perfectly watercolored a heart background when it didn't take any effort at all. I wanna use a paper piece from that Best Friends pattern paper pack. I love this paper, like I said, and whenever I love something, I have a hard time cutting it up because then it's gone. But I'm trying my best to realize that it's paper and it's pretty and it's meant to be used. So I picked out my favorite pattern from the whole paper pack and I cut it down to be the size of an A2 card so it would be covering my whole background. I didn't want to waste this paper though because it is my favorite pattern and I'm going to be placing my watercolored piece on top. So I have a die from Pink and Main. This is from the Layered Rectangles A2 die set and I selected a die that's slightly smaller than my background piece. And that's going to give me basically a frame. And even though I don't need a frame, I can now save that inner piece for a future card. So I'm not wasting any of that pattern paper that's going to be hiding behind my foreground piece. All I'm gonna do is just pop up that watercolored piece with some fun foam and add that onto my cardstock or my pattern paper background. And you can't even tell that I cut out the middle and that I'm going to save that for a future card. I have one of those chipboard pieces with a sentiment and I'm going to add that into the center of my card. I'll use my T-square ruler just to make sure that that is straight and centered in my heart and that's card number one. Let's move on here to card number two. This is going to be a gatefold card but it's very very easy to make. I'm taking that heart that is more solid with the floral accents to it and I'm going to stamp this in a stark black ink. And I'm going to do this twice so that I have two hearts that are black and it's going to look like all those flowers and vines are white. Then I'm taking the Coordinating Best Friends die set and I'm going to just tape that heart die in place and run that through my die cutting machine and I will die cut out both of those hearts. Now I've created a simple gatefold card. I cut a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock in half so that I have a piece that's eight and a half wide by five and a half tall. Then I scored each end at two and an eighth inches and I folded those flaps in towards the center and that's gonna give me an easy gatefold card. I've taken the coral cardstock from the kit and trimmed those to be five and a half tall by two and a quarter or two and an eighth inches wide so that they fit perfectly onto each of those flaps of my gatefold card. I trimmed out a strip of a piece of pattern paper and I'm just going to adhere that onto each of those gatefold flaps. I want to have it appear that this stripe is going all the way across the front, but I have to cut that in half so you can open the card. I'm going to adhere one heart right in the center of the one flap, but I'm leaving that open and I'm going to adhere the other die cut heart to the back so that that way I can be sure that there's going to be no adhesive on the right side of my flap. And that's gonna create my easy gatefold card. It really is so easy to do. I trimmed out a matching piece of the pattern paper. I chose that heart one and I put that on the inside of the card. Now I die cut out a scrap piece of white cardstock for with that heart die. And I'm gonna add that right into the center of the card using my heart that I have on the front as a guideline so that I get that lined up just perfectly. And that's going to be a little place for me to write my message. I added a sentiment strip from one of those chipboard stickers and that finishes card number two. For card three, I'm going to be using the Best Friends stencil. So I'm going to use just some purple tape to stick this stencil onto the back of my card. I usually prefer to use pixie spray, but this pattern I thought was not detailed enough that I needed to use it, so I decided to just go what was within my reach and just use some purple tape. I'm gonna use a blending brush and some gray ink and just blend over the top of this stencil and create a full background. I'm not really creating any depth or dimension with shading or a variation of color. I'm just doing a solid gray background. Now I'm gonna use some of the chipboard stickers. I've picked out all four of the hearts. There's actually five, I don't know what I did with my fifth heart. But, so I picked out four of the heart colors and then a sentiment strip as well. 
I'm going to start by just peeling off the back of that chipboard sentiment, and I'll put that down on my card where I want it. And then I'm just gonna peel off the backs of all of these chipboard sticker hearts and add those on. I'm keeping these in a square pattern, so two on the top and two on the bottom, and I'm kind of crisscrossing the colors. So the coral and the pink are across from each other. And that finishes my third card. I think this is probably one of the most simple, but I love this one. Let's move on to card number four. I realized that I hadn't used the sentiments from the stamp set. I've just been using those chipboard stickers. So I wanted to create a card that centered around one of those sentiments. And then I'm going to take that solid, the more solid heart, and I'm going to stamp this on my card. My idea was to stamp a whole bunch of these hearts all over my card. And in the end, I ended up only stamping two because I really liked the look. So don't be afraid to kind of change your card as you're going. So I started by just stamping one of the hearts in a uh, yellow ink off to the top right. And then this one's gonna go down to the bottom left of the sentiment and I'm gonna use a pink ink for this. And as I'm stamping, this is kind of when I realized that I really only wanted two of those hearts. I didn't wanna keep going and fill up the rest of the card. I am going to take that more detailed heart pattern and I'm gonna show you just how easily these layer together so that you can have a layered look. I'm gonna line this up. You wanna get your head right over the top to make sure that it's lined up just perfectly. And then I'm just going to make sure, it's really easy because you can see the stamped images are gonna line up perfectly with the white spaces in the heart. And I'm gonna stamp that with black ink. And look at how this turned out. I added some of those enamel hearts from the enamel shapes pack. And that's card number four. Let's move on to the last card. I'm gonna again use one of the sentiments from the stamp set, as well as the two little kind of sketchy leaves. And this card is gonna be super simple. I'm just using some of these chipboard flowers, doing a tiny bit of stamping, and that's it. This one, another one that's so super simple. I'm gonna just kind of lay out my sentiment here. I ended up changing the sentiment, but that's okay in the end. It's just kind of a placeholder for me. I laid out the chipboard stickers where I want them to go, and I'm just going to easily move them out of the way as I'm stamping so that I can stamp some of these leaves. And I'm not going to color them, I'm going to leave them black. I liked the graphic look. I thought that it really popped against those colored flowers. And I do wanna mention that if you end up not stamping something evenly, you can stamp over it again, but I didn't wanna press my luck with that. I have ruined many a card doing that. I find it much easier to just grab a black pen and fill in any areas where you may not have stamped completely. Once I have my sentiment stamped, as well as all of those little twigs and leaves, I'm going to just peel off the backers of my chipboard stickers and adhere them on top of those stamped images. I have a piece of the cardstock, or the pattern paper rather, from the Best Friends Pattern Paper Pack. And you can see again that I've cut out the center so that I have a frame. And this is a great way to create a shaker card, but I use this trick all the time to conserve and to hoard my pattern paper because it's so pretty. And I just don't want it to go to waste because you're not gonna see that huge portion in the middle. So I just save that with the rest of my pattern papers and you can't even tell. I've added some enamel shapes, just a couple, to kind of make that visual triangle of the two clusters of flowers and then those enamel shapes. And that finishes my last card. I'm going to pull in all five of my cards now, and as I do, I would love for you to tell me in the comments below which one is your favorite. And did you learn anything new today? I hope that you did. I hope that you kind of saw some ways to create some easy cards and whether you want to step up these designs and create more elaborate cards or case them as they are here. I hope that this inspires you to break out your best friend's crafty courtyard kit and really get crafty because I absolutely love these pattern papers. I love these stamps and I love how everything goes together. You can definitely tell all five of these cards are meant to go together as one collection. Thank you guys again so much for joining me. I will link the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard subscription box in the video description below. 
This month, the August 2020 card kit is sold out, so you're going to want to make sure that you subscribe to their kits to be sure that you're guaranteed a kit because these kits are amazing. They often sell out and they are limited. So head over to the Pink and Main website and you can have more information on the Crafty Courtyard kits. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.